I read this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, in the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was an earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now, I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, yet afraid, but filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And Jesus met them. Greetings. They came to them, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And he said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. We get two versions. One Mary Magdalene was there by herself because the other Mary had left. This one, they were both there and they got to touch him. And in the other version, he said, don't touch me. Why is it that we doubt anything in the Bible, even though there are these little discrepancies? They're witnesses. Anytime you ask people to be a witness for something and you have more than one witness, you will have stories that don't quite correspond. For example, you have a, a car accident and you ask a man, what was it? He said it was, a, it was a bright red Chevy and it ran into a Nissan that was going way too fast. And the woman will say, well, the lady who was driving the one car had this beautiful hat on and a scarf that matched and it was just lovely. Same accident, different responses. And that's why what is really true, what is really accurate in the differences in our Gospels, when we read them, the story is the same. The details may get messed up a little bit, depending on literary license taken by whoever it was that wrote it up at the time. And remember, some of these Gospels are written 75 to 80 years apart. Some of them are written almost at the time of it happening, and the others are after most of the people have died who were witness to things. And yet, the story stays the same. Everyone saw him dead on the cross. The world saw him put into a tomb that was sealed by a huge stone. The stone was not there to keep Jesus in. There was no way they, that the stone was there to keep Jesus in. There was nothing, nothing that could keep him in the grave. So the stone was there to make a point. The stone was there to let us understand fully that God's hand was in <clears throat> excuse me, every step of the holy day, holy week, from the time he was given up by a traitor who received 30 pieces of silver, which was the price of a slave. And when he tried to give the money back, they laughed in his face. Judas then committed suicide. No good thing comes from trying to profit at the expense of others. That's a side note. That's not what Easter's about. Easter's about conquering the grave. Easter's about overcoming death. Easter is about trusting our belief. Now I know <clears throat> that my wife and I will give you different stories about our wedding day, I'm sure. I remember it one way, and she remembers it another way, and we were both there at the same place. 
I can almost re I can remember what she wore because our daughter got to wear it when she got married. So, and my suit lasted. It may still be hanging in my closet. And if it's hanging there, then we're going to get on me because the closet didn't fatten it up like the kitchen did me. Witnesses tell different stories because the things that they see make a different impression. But if a red Chevy ran into a blue Nissan, it's still a traffic accident. It doesn't make any difference. The different views that the witnesses saw. Because what happened, happened. Now whether Mary Magdalene stood in the garden by herself and saw Jesus and he said, don't touch me. I have not yet been home to my father. Or whether they were able to touch his feet and then go tell the disciples. We read one more, one more story of it and they didn't go tell the disciples. They went home frightened and hid out because things they didn't understand had happened in their life. We're in the midst of a mess right now because we're not sure we really understand what it is that this virus is doing to us as individuals. Oh, I'm not getting sick from it. I'm getting sick of it because it has made me change things in my life that I don't want to change. But it also made me stop and realize there are a lot of things in my life that I need to concentrate more on. I need to know every hour, every day that Christ rose from the dead because he needed to conquer death. He needed to have, let us have no fear of the grave because that's not where we will spend eternity. For Christ has called us to be one with him. He's called us to come home with him and be with him through all the rest of eternity. And he doesn't play favorites. Even Peter said that, that he shows no favoritism, whether it be Jew or Greek or whatever. But everyone, everyone is heir to the, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the soul. So we sing songs that make sense at this time of year. We could sing them all year long and they would still make sense. But we, we confine our Easter songs to Easter and our Christmas songs to Christmas, even though the message that's in the song is applicable, is so true every day of our lives. He isn't risen just on Easter day, he's risen through eternity. He isn't alive just on Easter, he's alive as long as he's in my heart and your heart. So the songs that we sing remind us that he is alive. We are alive as long as he is. And he said we will dwell in his house through eternity. For he has made a place for us. No exceptions. No reasonable. All we have to do is know. Know in our hearts that the songs we sing at Easter time are true. Christ is alive. Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen. He lives. All of those things, they're true. That's what Easter is about. A reminder once a year, when it ought to be a reminder once a week, or once a day, even once an hour, Christ is alive. Let angels sing, let me sing, let every one of us sing songs of joy because Christ has risen. But the, the burial cloths in the tomb covered our sins that he left there when he came out. No, he didn't need the stone rolled away. He, could, he was gone long before the stone was rolled away. But that represents the barrier between believing and not accepting that Christ did what he said he would do, did what the Bible says he did, did what all of the hymns we sing say, 
he came back from the grave, but he left our sins there. What a freedom we have. What a weight off of our shoulders to know that even though we aren't as good as we ought to be, we're his. We belong to the living Christ. Christ is alive. Let angels sing. Strange things bring us strange fears. A virus we can't see drives us into our homes. But the love of Christ frees us from all else. Know the peace of being loved by the one who gave himself that we need not worry about our place. It's with him in peace.